The Lal Street soared soon after the Reserve Bank of India uh, policy, but profit-taking wipes out all the gains by the end of the trade. Uh, the Sensex and the Nifty ended flat. The 10-year bond yields eased a bit. Mid-cap and small-cap indices outperformed benchmark indices after many days of steep underperformance. LNT Finance, IDFC First Bank, CG Power, Walkhart lead the chart. Market breadth is in favour of advances with the advanced decline ratio at 3 is to 2. The Monetary Policy Committee springs a surprise in the first policy under Governor Shakti Kanta Das. It's cut the repo rate for the first time in 18 months in what was essentially a 4-2 decision at the MPC. Votes, uh, it's also voted unanimously, the MPC that is, to change the stance to neutral after cutting the inflation forecast for F520 to just above 3% levels. NBFC's rise in trade after the RBI also reduced the risk weights for banks lending to them. Tata Motors misses the mark on all parameters as JLR reports a loss for the third straight quarter. A one-time loss due to asset impairment of JLR stands at nearly 28,000 crores. Grasson gains 3% after margins meet street expectations. Vodafone idea also surges on better-than-expected margin performance. ICICI Prudential is up 8% after a terrible losing streak over the last many months. Uh, it's reported an annual premium growth of 16% on a year-on-year -year basis in the month of January. This after a decline the previous month. Sun Pharma gets a boost after its subsidiary Taro's third quarter revenues beat street expectations. Lupin sees further weakness. CNBC TV in access is Form 483 issued to the Pitham per unit. Two US FDA issues six observations including the inability to thoroughly review uh, unexplained discrepancies and lack of employee training. Well, those were the top five stories which kept Dalal Street busy. Uh, hello and welcome to a fresh new edition of Markets Today Talk Pack. This is the show where we look back at uh, all of the six hours of trading and uh, tell you what to, uh, what to remember, what to try and understand and of course what to look forward to as we come back tomorrow. I am Prashant Nair with me today, my colleague Ikta Batra. Hi Ikta. Hi Prashant. Yes, absolutely. Well, over the next 30 minutes, we will be apprising our viewers about those top five market stories which made or broke the markets and our guests will be answering all of your stock queries. So joining in this afternoon, we have Sanjeev Basin of IFL and technical expert Mitesh Thakkar. Mitesh as well as Sanjeev, thank you very much for joining in. Welcome to the show. Uh, but uh, before we come to all of the questions that we do have, Prashant, it turned out to be quite a choppy day if you have to look at it as a whole, considering the reaction that we had post-credit policy on the bank nifty. Absolutely. Uh, Ekta, I mean, I I thought the credit, credit policy reaction was a bit of a big yawn because uh, nothing really. I mean, you know, uh, it's the polls were all throwing up, uh, the printed polls were all throwing up, well, no change and uh, uh, ch change in stance. Uh, but I think I mean, if you just sp spoke to people in the market, everybody was expecting a t at least a 25 basis points. Uh, I mean, if not more, at least I'm talking about the st uh, people in the stock market. Uh, so, yeah, you got 25 basis points, you got a change in stance and you got a bunch of other things unrelated to the, uh, the uh, rate, uh, rate trajectory itself. Uh, and, uh, I mean, the market did what it does. I mean, it uh, had gone up uh, over the last five or six trading sessions by quite a bit and it actually reversed. It gave up all, all of those gains. Uh, so, uh, you know, but by the, by the way, with a seven-point change higher today on the Nifty, we are still up for the, we are basically up for the sixth day in a row. So, that's nothing to be scoffed at. Uh, but to me, the breadth of the market which improved and actually which was two is to one mid-afternoon, uh, which actually converged by close, the difference between advances and declines wasn't that large. Advances were still more than uh, declines, uh, but uh, it was, uh, you know, it, it came off sharply from where it was earlier in the day. But this is still better than the last so many days, actually. So uh, the participation improved a little bit. Uh, you saw some impact on NBFCs, especially gold loan companies like Muthu, uh, Manapuram. We'll discuss those in detail. Some, uh, you know, policy boost because of the RBI coming through there. Uh, as far as the broader market is concerned, media, largely thanks to Z, auto and pharma sectors did well. Sectors did poorly were uh, energy, public sector banks and infrastructure, which were down and out. Uh, all in all, I mean, you know, uh, a little, little bit more in terms of participation, but... Uh, uh, many of the problems still continue. 
Yes, absolutely. And there were a lot of stocks in focus. So Sun Pharma, which really led from the front. We had Z Entertainment, which has done very well on a week-to-date basis. Aisha Motors, Bajaj Auto, Tata Motors, maybe it is rate sensitives which gain, but all of these auto stocks did very well today. And we had Axis, Bajaj, Finserv, which were in the green. Uh, mixed really, you'd have to say, for financials today. So on the downside, there was some amount of profit booking, which came in on the likes of GSW Steel, um, as well as the likes of LNT and Reliance Industries, which were down around a percent and a half. From the broader markets, what stood out were the Anil Ambani stocks. Uh, Reliance Infra, Reliance Capital, Reliance Communication, all of these stocks were down and out for another trading session. So it's lost significantly over a couple of days. HEG, Ujjiva, Nadani Power, DHFL, Lupin were a couple of other stocks which lost out. A couple of stocks which gained, interestingly, was Vodafone Idea, ICICI Pro, and IDFC First Bank. But let's get going in terms of what our market guests are making of uh, the markets. Uh, Mitesh, over to you then. How would you sum up today's trading session and your call for tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, good evening. So I think today, one, uh, it was on the back of uh, extremely strong uh, rally yesterday. And uh, we also had uh, the bank Nifty expiry. So my sense is that maybe, you know, we've had a good run. Uh, maybe a couple of days of sideways action could happen, one or two days. But I think the breakout which happened yesterday does suggest that the overall trend should now be considered on the upside unless until we start breaking below the levels of 10,960, 980 again. So uh, the idea should be that you will have these days of consolidation quite pullbacks. But I think overall we are looking at a test of around 11,250. If you recall, the range was around 10,980 to about 10,660, so roughly about 300 points. Uh, gives you targets in the range closer to about 11,250 on the upside. So we'll maintain that unless until we break 10,980 again. Uh, so, Mitesh, you're saying no trade kind of zone, uh, wait for these levels to give you an indication? Yeah, so I think until we don't break them, one, I think, you know, uh, we would stay positive. In fact, in, in case there are any declines for what levels of 11,000, I would even consider adding on to long positions or long exposure and on the upside, maintain targets of 11,250. Okay. All right. We move on to the second story uh, then. Broader markets outperformed benchmark indices after many days of steep underperformance. Small cap and mid cap indices rose almost a percent each. As far as stocks go, LNT Finance, IDFC, First Bank, Walkard were some of the gainers, and there were many others. Market breadth was in favor of advances with, a, with an advanced decline ratio of 3 is to 2. We've got a question, Ekta. Okay, well, we have Diva Varma, who has a question on LNT Finance. 360 shares of the company, which is bought at almost 135 rupees. Long-term investor and wants to know if he should hold or sell. Sanjeev, what would you recommend? Well, definitely hold. I think the worst of the NBFC fiasco may be coming to an end. And it has, uh, you know, sorted out the men from the boys. I would say uh, LNT Finance is definitely a candidate of being a strong, uh, ma you know, man. And I think that will lead from the front. Today's rate cut would reinforce cost of money getting slightly cheaper. And I think they've handled their asset quality extremely well. Extremely bullish on the stock with a one-year view of 185. Okay. All right, uh, Mitesh, what about you? What would you recommend on LNT Finance? Yeah, I think similar. Uh, I, the stock has actually peaked out at about 210 odd levels in October 17, come down to about 120, 125 zones, which on the long term charts are very good support areas. Today it was 135, but two days back it was 125. So I think accumulate around these levels if you can add, add more to positions, otherwise hold. And I think on the upside, I have a target of around 155, 160 to begin with. And if you cross that, I think very close to what Sanjeev mentioned, 175, 180, the upside could happen also. Okay. All right. Well, let's get to the third headline for today then. The RBI Monetary Policy Committee decided to cut the key policy rates by 25 basis points. This was the first policy decision under Governor Shakti Kanta Das and the first rate cut all the way back since August of 2017. Four members of the committee voted in favor of rate cut, including the new governor and the usually hawkish executive director at RBI, Michael Patra, Deputy Governor Viral Acharya and MPC member Chetan Khate voted to a status quo. However, the MPC voted unanimously to change the policy stance from calibrated tightening to neutral. Uh, well, we do have Lata joining in to tell us more. The first monetary policy under the new governor has been announced. And uh, it was quite a seminal policy in terms of uh, a certain change in tone, in stance and in action that uh, it uh, brought about. The key takeaways, one of course, uh, there has been a cut in rates. 
and two, there has been a change in stance basically coming to a neutral would mean that uh, the chances of a rate cut are higher because in the previous calibrated tightening stance rate cuts were off the table now they are on the table the more important takeaway is the inflation forecast for 2019 have been cut by a good 60 to 80 basis points from an already lowered uh, interest rate projection in the previous policy now for the entire 2019 the highest inflation rate is 3.9 percent below the monetary policy committee's mandated 4% CPI. Uh, a fourth takeaway is that there has been a much more recognition that growth needs support. Uh, there were various references both in the uh, uh, policy statement and in the press conference thereafter to foster and bolster uh, private capex which has not picked up at all. And finally, there has been a bit of uh, a munificence, if you please, uh, a bit of SOPs for the NBFC sector. A large part uh, of the risk weight has been reduced at, for a large number of NBFCs and that could reduce the cost of borrowing for those NBFCs where banks don't have an asset quality doubt. Lata, thanks very much uh, for that. Well, as Lata was pointing out, the RBI has made it easier for banks to lend to non-banking finance companies. The rules governing risk weights for bank exposure to NBFCs have been revised. Uh, from now, the risk weight will be linked to ratings, credit ratings. This means that uh, better rated or AAA rated NBFCs will attract or be in a better position to get funds more easily from banks. The new rules on harmonizing the different types of NBFCs will be issued by the end of the month. Uh, on the back of this, we saw, saw uh, gold loan companies like Muthur Finance, Manapuram Finance, uh, which were up uh, more than 6% each. I mean, actually, we've got a question coming in from Joby Sebastian. He's got 750 shares of Manapuram Finance, which he's uh, purchased at 47 rupees a share. He's a long-term investor, wants uh, advice on whether he should hold or sell. 750 shares of Manapuram cost is 47 rupees. Uh, Mitesh, what would you tell him? So I think, see, one, uh, he's bought it at a very good price and clearly, uh, you know, that uh, does suggest that uh, uh, he has uh, some leverage uh, in terms of deciding his uh, uh, stay. The stock recently went down to as low as 70 in September. That's a long-term support. That should be his uh, stop loss uh, and I would suggest trailing the stop loss. I think it should head towards 124, 125, which was the recent highs. If it crosses that, we'll look at further target. But for the time being, at least hold till 124, 125 comes. He can then either choose to sell or maybe take a fresh call. Okay. Oh, that's on Manapuram Finance. Uh, Sanjeev, would you have a view on Manapuram? Uh, good numbers. Yes, and you know the collateral being gold, it's a standard universal asset. So there is not going to be too much of problem on the asset quality. So I think it's a very, very strong business and now the franchise is getting stronger as we see credit fall. So both these companies would stand to gain given that the asset, you know, the asset is singular and there can be hardly any problems on that. So I think it's a very robust business going forward. It should be gathering more steam. Okay, uh, thanks very much for that. Well, we have Sanjeev Bhaseen and Mitesh Thakkar who are in conversation with us to answer all of your questions and decode today's market. Well, we're done with three headlines of the day. So let's go to the fourth headline to the big earnings of the day. Tata Motors missed the mark on all parameters as JLR reported a loss for the third straight quarter. JLR posted a one-time loss of 28,000 crores due to asset impairment. Uh, Sonia Shinoy, our colleague, is here with us uh, to tell us how the markets, how the numbers panned out. Sonia, over to you. Well, thanks a lot for that. It was a shocker for Tara Motors this time around. Hugely negative numbers, a big consolidated loss of 26,900 crores because of a one-time loss of 27,000 crores that they had to incur on account of impairment of JLR's assets. But even if you strip that off, the Jaguar Land Rover core operational performance has weakened substantially. It's the third consecutive quarter of losses for JLR. In fact, JLR has reported a net loss of 3.1 billion pounds this time around much higher than what they saw last quarter. But the biggest disappointment really lies on the margin front. 
7.3% margins is what Jaguar Land Rover reported, much below street expectations of around 11% and a 360 basis points fall on a year-on-year -year basis. The management blamed it on weakness in China as well as the destocking impact. Even the standalone numbers were nothing to talk about. In fact, standalone revenues grew just 1.5% year-on-year to 16,200-odd crores and it saw it recorded a 600 crore profit. However, the standalone business is very small. The big disappointment really comes from Jaguar Land Rover. On that context, the management did mention that the demand situation continues to be quite muted and things could continue to be challenging despite the cost control efforts that they have undertaken. Okay, this is, uh, Sonia, thank you very much for that. This is another huge underperformer uh, and these numbers will not help at all. Uh, we've got a question. Sini Mishra has written in with a question on Tata Motors. Uh, he's got 12,650 shares of Tata Motors. His cost is 182. Today's close is 183. Uh, Long-term investor wants to know if uh, she, not he, should hold or sell 12,650 shares of Tata Motors at 182. It's a sizable holding. Sanjeev, uh, first a comment on the results, what it would mean with, for the stock and what should uh, Sini do? Yeah, so I have not been privy to the results. I just heard what Sonia said and except they, they seem to be very, very weak. But that's typical. We've seen China being in a bear market, consumption low over there. Same as the case with Europe. Now, they are stabilizing a large part of the business. The, the one-time impairment loss looks big on the paper, but that was part of it. Uh, we have to see if the, the local color seems good. CV cycle is turning, but it will take some more quarters before you get the strength back as is indicated by the management. I would advise the, uh, the, the, the investor to, uh, you know, at least switch 50% of that into better names like Aishar, Maruti or Ashok Leland or spread your risk because some of the autos are now looking extremely po positive given that burst of the meek back crews may be behind us. So I would suggest a basket of Maruti, Aisha Motor and uh, uh, maybe Bajaj Auto and Ashok Leland to be bought and s s pair some of the holdings. You are close to the cost which is at the present market price. So you'll be able to spread your risk more and better for that. Okay, well, let's move on to another stock now. Grassim gained 3% after reporting what was an inline set of numbers for its third quarter. The net profit rose 28% year-on-year, -year, uh, while the revenue was up 21%. Nigel D'Souza joins in to wrap up the highlights for us. Well, for Grassim, bulk of its value comes in from its holding in Altitech Cement as well as AB Capital. And both those two had already come out with their set of numbers. Now, first look at the numbers that appeared a little bit better than what the street was working with. Sales numbers growth was better than what was anticipated. There was some margin expansion as well, despite the fact that you had input costs that had spiked up. But you're looking at both the segments, the VSF business as well as the chemicals business. Looking at the VSF business first, the street was working with a number of around 520 crores in terms of an EBITDA number. That came in at around 480 crores also. That was a bit of a miss. There was margin compression as well. So BSF business goes down as a miss. But the chemicals business made up for that because of there the EBITDA growth was close to around 23% odd. There was some margin expansion as well. So it was a pretty mixed, mixed set in terms of both these two uh, segments. The profit number came in at around 610 crores. You had higher interest and finance costs, though lower taxation. That's what partly offset that. Nigel, thank you uh, very much for that. That is uh, Grassim in focus. One number which came out yesterday, uh, but I mean, we saw that big reaction today was Vodafone Idea. The stock surged in trade on better than expected margin performance. Although, I mean, if you just go by the actual profit number, it was not a big, it was not a profit, it was a big loss. Uh, there was a 5,000 crore, near 5,000 crore rupee loss. Meanwhile, uh, the revenues for the company were a minus miss as well. EBITDA margins is, I think, what uh, kept the stock higher. Apart from, of course, the fact uh, that uh, the stock has been a big uh, underperformer. I mean, it's actually uh, lost money. Forget about underperformance. It's just on an absolute basis being crushed. Okay, well, the fifth and the last headline for today, stocks in focus were ICICI Crew, which gained around 8% after it reported an annual premium growth of 16% on a year-on-year -year basis in Jan. Remember that in December, the growth was in negative terrain. The stock has been a huge underperformer, and even after today's big up move, it is still only a shade above its listing price in 2016. So we have a couple of stocks such as ICICI Crew and Vodafone Idea in focus. Um, Prashant? Sun Pharma, uh, Ekta, I mean, we discussed this earlier. It ended 4% higher after the subsidiary Taro's third quarter revenues beat street expectations. On the other hand, Lupin uh, was the uh, other one which lost 2%. This after the US FDA issued six observations to its Pithamper Unit 2. Uh, Ekta, I mean, uh, let's talk about both these briefly. Maybe start with Lupin. 
Well, for Lupin, you know, it is the Pithampur Unit 2 which has received six observations. The nature of the observations, they weren't repeat in nature. Remember that they have a warning letter since November 2017. That's positive. But it seems, as per the feedback that I've got, is that it is probably going to be tougher for them to resolve in terms of at least a couple of observations which include uh, out of specification and, you know, lack of employee training. Uh, but separately, we have Sun Pharma which managed to gain good today because of uh, Taro which reported good numbers. Numbers. So, Taro reported, which was a revenue growth of around 13 odd percent versus estimates of, uh, you know, a flat performance, margins over 40 percent. And despite that, the profit was higher because full, supported by a low base, but overall, good set of numbers. Uh, Lakshmi has a question on Sun Pharma. She has a 1440 shares, which she bought at 592, and she's a long term investor and wants to know if she should hold or sell that particular stock. What would you recommend, uh, Sanjeev? Well, I would recommend hold. I know we've been through the worst of corporate governance issues where the company tried to come clean on some of the linkages with uh, one of the subsidiaries and so on. And they've tried to allay a lot of fears. The underlying business seems good because we've seen Dr. Reddy be a huge outperformer after robust numbers came. And we think generic pricing in the U.S. may be back. Taro is a good indicator that seems to be one of the better placed uh, verticals. So I would say stay hold. You may get back your price. Alternatively, if you do get a rally, you can try and diversify a bit into Dr. Reddy, which I think can be the outperformer in the near term. Okay, uh, thanks very much, Sanjeev and Mitesh, for joining us and taking us through, uh, you know, all of that uh, questions and, uh, I mean, answering all that uh, uh, for us, as always. Thank you very much, both of you, for being with us here. Well, uh, Ikhra, it's also a wrap here in this edition of Markets Today uh, Talk Pack. Uh, so, decent day, the breath improved, but let's uh, keep our fingers crossed for when we come back tomorrow. Thanks very much for staying with us. More coming up on the other side.